Hey guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. Michelle DiPetrillo here again. Um, after speaking with several of you, it sounds like you wanted to see a charcuterie next. So I figured maybe what I could do is kind of go over and do sort of a tutorial of how I do my charcuteries. As you can see, I've got a ton of stuff in front of me. Um, lots of my favorite things that I use uh, frequently for my charcuteries. A lot of them I always tend to have extras on hand too, um, which makes it great so that you kind of can make one on a whim if you have friends come over or if you just need a quick dinner or a quick snack. So I'm going to review a few of these things here. You don't have to use all of them, but this is kind of what I like to use for mine. And the best part of a charcuterie is you can really use whatever you like. You can kind of turn it into whatever you want. Um, I tend to like a smorgasbord of different stuff, kind of combining crazy flavors, fun flavors. Um, so yeah, let me start and I'll uh, kind of show you what we have going on here. All right, so to start, usually what I like to do is I like to make sure I have at least three or four different meats to three or four different cheeses. Usually um, I only do more cheeses than meats. That's just a preference. It's really what you like more. So um, one of the meats that I chose to get, it's actually a chorizo, um, it's picante, it's a little bit of a spicy one. I just got this at Stop and Shop, so I'm gonna use this. A turkey summer sausage, which is actually one of my favorites. It's delicious when you dunk it in some Dijon mustard with um, a nice cheese to complement it. So I'm gonna use this, and I got this from Trader Joe's. That's actually one of my favorite spots to go for all of my cheeses and meats. They have great prices. Seasonal cheeses that are so fun, all different kinds. You'll kind of get to see a few, um, and I can tell you which ones are my favorites. Um, I also got from one of my local delis um, some prosciutto, and what I like to do is roll it into little pieces, and I'll show you the end result once I put it all together. I also have some salami that I also got from the deli. Sometimes I buy it hard, and I just um, cut it into little pieces, and sometimes I like to buy it kind of like deli meat and just roll it together. Now, I also have um, some different cheeses that I'm planning on using, of course. Uh, one of my favorites to get from Trader Joe's is actually their goat milk cheese that's uh, wrapped in different fruit. This one is a apricot cherry cranberry goat cheese. It's delicious. With all the saltiness going on on the platter, um, it's nice to have something a little sweet to mix in. I also have a fun sage derby cheese. I actually haven't tried this one yet. Um, this is one of the things I love about charcuteries. When I go out, um, I see different cheeses, and sometimes, even if I don't have a charcuterie plan to make, I just pick up the cheese so that I know I can try it. Um, it's always fun to have different colors and stuff too. As you can see, this one's kind of a nice green color. It's pretty neat looking. I also have a nice, um, I believe this is a World Cheddar. It's VAT 17. I actually tried this at the store. Um, when I had gone and it was absolutely delicious. Let me get that here. One of my favorites that you generally will always see on my charcuterie um, is the Havarti dill cheese. I just love this stuff. Um, I love the texture of it. I love the taste of it. Dill is one of my favorite herbs. Um, so I really like to use this on my board. Next, I've got some cheddar curds here. I've got two different kinds. I've got a buffalo style curd and I've got a ranch style curd. So I'm gonna kind of mix these together um, and let people try them and see what they think. This is the first time I've used this kind in particular on my board. I also have a brie cheese. Um, this I got from Trader Joe's. It also has truffles in it. Truffles are one of my favorite things. You can ask my husband even when he makes steak for us. I'm always like extra truffle oil, please extra. So I'm really excited to try this. Um, it'll be my first time having it. Brie is also another one of my favorite cheeses, so this one should be good. I picked this up at Dave's. Um, this was a maple bacon cheddar, and I'm gonna plan on using this. So I have all of this kind of cheese and meat out, um, ready to go. I'm not sure if they're all gonna fit on my platter, but if they don't, it's fine. I'll actually save it for the next time I make a charcuterie. But I like to kind of use a variety of different cheeses and different meats. Um, Trader Joe's actually has one of my favorite sausage links that I usually get, but unfortunately they didn't have it. I guess they ran out because everybody loves it as much as I do. Um, so if I do another charcuterie, I'll uh, show you guys a picture of it next time. Hopefully they'll have it back in stock. So some of the other staples I like to add to my charcuterie include 
fig butter. I get this from Trader Joe's also, but any jam works perfectly. You could even use like a red pepper jelly. It's delicious. I've used that before. I also like to add um, pickles. In this case, they're called cornichons or cornicons. You might know the proper pronunciation. I obviously don't, um, but I get these from Trader Joe's too. They're delicious. I like to add a medley of mixed Greek olives. I get these from BJ's actually. They also have them at Trader Joe's. These are actually pitted, but you can get them with the pits in if you prefer from Trader Joe's or any local market. I also like to do Dijon mustard, my favorite, truffle marsona almonds. I add cranberries to the platter just because it adds a nice um, color to it. It also adds a nice flavor when you're picking in between the cheese and the meats, add a little sweetness. I always add chocolate to my board. Um, a lot of the times I use a dark chocolate, but my other favorite chocolate, this is from Trader Joe's too, of course. It's a Swiss milk chocolate with 30%, it says whole hazelnuts, delicious. I'm gonna add some rosemary um, to the board just to kind of give it a pretty look, as well as these are some glazed, or I'm sorry, caramelized pecans. Now, I like to put the pickles and the olives because they're juicy into these little ramekins. I think I got these on sale from Target. Um, you can order them on Amazon. You can get them really anywhere. BJ's might even have them or um, Job Lot. For the mustard and the fig butter, I like to put them in these tiny little, um, I guess they're ramekins too. I don't know what exactly you would call them. And then lastly, I like a variety of crackers. <laughs> um, usually with these, I just put them in a bowl to the side. I mix them all together. Um, every time I get different ones, it doesn't matter. Um, I like these Raincoast Crisps. They're cranberry and hazelnut crackers. Adds a little sweetness with the different cheeses. I also picked up these um, garlic thyme crackers. These are delicious. They have these at Stop and Shop. I'm pretty sure they probably have them at all the markets, um, but they're quite tasty. The brand is Firehook. And one of my favorite things that are always a huge hit when people come over are my homemade crostini. So these are delicious. I actually make these, um, what I do is I buy a loaf of bread. I kind of let it sit out for a while. This one's actually a garlic loaf of bread. It has chunks of garlic in it. I slice it thin. I put it on a pan. I bake it for about five minutes at 375. Pull them out, add olive oil, fresh garlic, salt and pepper, and brush it onto both sides of the crostini. Then bake again for another five minutes. Flip them over, pull it out, or I'm sorry, no, put them back in and then bake again for another six minutes. These are absolutely delicious. These go in my house like wildfire. My husband eats these with soup, you name it. Sometimes he just has them as a snack because he thinks they're so tasty. So, the other thing I like to use, which I've had these, I think these were actually my mom's, is these cute little charcuterie knives for cutting the cheese or also for spreading the fig butter and um, for spreading the Dijon mustard. They come in very handy. Now that I've shown you this, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm actually gonna cut my cheeses as well as cut the meats up and roll up that prosciutto. I'm gonna put it on the charcuterie and then I'll show you the finished product. And here's our finished charcuterie. As you can see, I added many of the things that I showed you earlier. I wasn't able to add all of them, um, but it, hopefully it helped to give you an idea of some of the things that I like to use on my charcuterie. Um, as usual, I always add my staple, the dill Havarti. Um, I always add the summer sausage, some of my favorites, the Marsona almonds. Um, but a lot of the other things actually on this board, I'm trying for the first time um, today. So it's exciting to be able to kind of add your own flair to a charcuterie board, things that you like, um, kind of design it the way you want. The way I did was kind of um, in a circular fashion. That's how I tend to do mine. I need to kind of break out of the box a little and maybe try something different. But as you can see, it still looks pretty um, in a circular fashion. I put all the little picky things in the middle with the olives, the things with juices in them, the olives, the pickles, um, the fig jam, and the uh, Dijon mustard. I also added a little bit of rosemary just kind of around to make it um, more aesthetically pleasing. And that's our charcuterie. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If I can help in any way, I'm more than happy to. Um, as always, I hope everyone is staying well and staying safe. 
please know I miss you all. Um, and I hope that this maybe brought a little bit of cheer. Um, and everyone stay well. Thank you for joining me today.